New Year's resolutions kind of suck and put a lot of pressure on us. But what if you could be happier, healthier, more productive, more organized, just by letting a couple of things go? I'm gonna show you 24 things that you can declutter before 2024 that will drastically change your life just by decluttering. Okay, let's start with things that make you feel really bad about yourself. And the biggest offender, for me anyways, are clothes that don't fit me. My weight is up and down like a yo-yo. You know if you watch me, I've had struggles. And I was a lot smaller after I had weight loss surgery, so I bought a bunch of clothes that I loved at the time, but I've gained some weight back. And every time I look in my closet and I see this shirt, I think, you're fat, you're lazy, you it should do better. Stop eating. This shirt is bullying me. This shirt is making me feel like a terrible person and it's an article of clothing. If you have clothes that are too small, get them out of your closet. I don't care if you intend to lose the weight. You should not look at these every day and feel shame. Put them under your bed. Put them in an old suitcase, but get them out of your closet because everything in your closet should make you feel good. Let's talk about undergarments for one hot second. I don't know why, like as women, why do we have bras that poke us with wires and we just keep dealing with it? Or underwear that are ripped and stained or ride up our crack. They make us feel uncomfortable, first of all, but also it's disrespectful. I'm no longer going to allow my stuff to call me names. And even if stuff does fit, like this dress fits me, but I feel insecure whenever I wear it and my arms are kind of flabby and I just end up taking it back off and hanging it back up for some reason. Like maybe if I work out or maybe magically tomorrow, this will make me feel good. If it doesn't make you feel good, it makes you feel bad. Goodbye. This is the first time I think ever that I don't have one of these things that make everybody feel bad about themselves and I'm really proud. And that is weight loss supplements, protein powders, protein shakes, keto food. I always fall into this trap at the beginning of the year, right? New year, new you. And I buy a bunch of stuff to lose weight. And then I never like the stuff. I never follow through. I never use the protein powder and it becomes clutter. And more than that, it becomes a nasty, toxic bully. Let it go. If you hate the taste of that protein powder, it doesn't matter that it was $50. You're never going to use it. Stand up for yourself and say goodbye. I need to know if I'm the only one who buys a bunch of planners with intentions of using them and getting super organized and then can never find or remember to use my planners. And every time I look at them, do you know what I think? Why can't you get your life together and use an actual planner? Why are you spending so much money cash on stuff you'll never use? They make me feel bad. I am not a planner person. My name is Cassandra Arson and I hate planners. There, I said it and I'm letting these go and I'm going to be okay with it because when I look at them, I feel bad, but when they're gone, I won't even know. I've been feeling really insecure about aging lately, which I know is silly, but it's just the truth. And I find myself buying a lot of anti-aging products to try to look better, but they don't work or I don't like them, but I keep them because they were expensive. And every time I look at them, do you know what I think? Two things. One, you're a moron for wasting money on this stuff. And also, it didn't work, you still look like crap. These are bullies and they're leaving. I hope you can let them go too. I know they're expensive, but the money's been spent. You are not gonna use them by keeping them in your drawer. They're just making you feel bad about yourself. We all have stuff in our house that just makes unnecessary work for us. And for me, one of the biggest offenders is lost socks. I know a lot of you have like a plan for lost socks. You like got it handled, I do not. If you have lost socks and every day or in your drawer, you're like doing this, trying to find a match to the, is this the same shade of black? No, nobody's got time for that. Take 10 minutes, match what you can and let go of the rest. You deserve better. I deserve better. These are going. Another thing that makes a lot of work are kitchen gadgets or appliances that kind of only do one thing or just overcomplicate it, like choppers or slicers, those fancy peelers or shredders. It's actually really hard to clean these things, so it's taking more time. You could just use a knife. Save time, save the cleanup, save yourself some work. 
It's all the little things that add up to a lot of work. And something that a lot of people do is play salad dressing and sauce roulette, where you have to like look and see if it's expired or shuffle things around to find the things that are actually good in your fridge. And that takes up a ton of time. All those few seconds add up to more work. So take a second, declutter all the expired stuff right now. Piles of paper make more work for you. The only thing you need to keep are like tax purposes for seven years. All this extra paper, the junk mail, the notices, the brochures, the coupons, the bills that you've paid, they can all go. Do you know something that creates a ton of work for me every day? my 1400 emails in my inbox, in my Gmail account. It's embarrassing, but the truth is like, I'm scrolling and searching and looking for the important ones because there's so many unimportant ones. And I think that decluttering them is going to be a big deal, but it isn't. Here's the tip. Go to the Gmail, not the app, but like actually on Google, like type in Gmail and then find something that is spam or that you don't want anymore, right? Uh, how about this one? I'm going to select this and then select all, like filter all the ones that look like that. Now what you can do is select all and then not only delete them all or spam them all, but I'll unsubscribe at the same time with one click. So you're like unsubscribing and deleting in minutes. You can get through 1400 emails in no time at all. I don't know if you do this, but I definitely do this. I have a drawer or a basket with like random batteries. Do they work? Are they full? Are they empty? No one will know until you try them. And then I put them back in the drawer to play this game again later. And I do the same thing with pens. Let's stop the craziness, save ourselves time, and just get rid of all the things that don't work. Let's talk about things that make you feel really lazy. The biggest offender, I think, is unfinished projects, whether it's that quilt you started or the scrapbook you said you're going to do one day. My husband is a project starter and not a project finisher. He started this ukulele two years ago, and he has 50 other of these projects on the go that now he just looks at them in the boxes and the piles and tells himself, what's wrong with you? Why are you so unmotivated? Why are you so lazy that you don't finish this? And if you can relate to that, all of those unfinished projects are bullies. They're calling you lazy and it's time to stand up for yourself and let at least some of them go. I hate skating and I have played badminton one time in my entire life. Why am I not letting it go? Because when I look at this, I think, why are you not playing badminton with your kids, you lazy mom? And why are you not going skating with your kids? Like those families that hold hands and skate around because I hate freaking skating, that's why. And I wouldn't remember that I suck as a mother for not using these things if they were gone. I would do other things with my kids I actually enjoy. The only thing these are doing is making me feel super lazy, so they have got to go. I am convinced that buying craft supplies and being a crafter are two completely different hobbies, and I mostly fall in the latter category where I'm like, I'm gonna do making jewelry, and I'm gonna do this amazing, I'm gonna learn to knit a hat, and I buy all the supplies for all these incredible things I'm gonna do, and then I look at these and think, why are you so lazy? Why don't you actually do the thing you're gonna do? And it's kind of nasty and toxic. Uh, it turns out I hate polymer clay. I bought it. I don't enjoy doing it. And I don't enjoy looking at it because I'm reminded that I wasted money on something that I'm never going to do. <sighs> new year, new me. Craft supplies I'll never use are leaving. A couple of months ago, I finally decluttered my unused gym membership that I had been paying for for almost five years and never went. If you're in the same boat, declutter that thing. You're not gonna start using it if you haven't already and just be free of the guilt and shame that comes with it and making you feel lazy, but that also goes with unused gym equipment. It's a new year, it's a new us. If we really think we're going to use some of these things, keep them. All that exercise equipment that you're just looking at and feeling lazy and you know you'll never use it needs to leave before 2024. If you have things that need to be fixed, like an old vacuum cleaner, maybe something that has to be mended, something with a hole in it, and you have had that thing for more than six months sitting there, it's gotta go. Put it in the trash, you will never think about it again.
Okay, now let's talk about things that make you feel really guilty and shameful. And the top one for me is past identity clutter. And what I mean by this is things that used to be me but are no longer me. So I ran a daycare for years and I had all of the kind of tools and the puppets and all the flashcards from the daycare. And I would look at these fondly, but then it also feel a lot of guilt that I wasn't passing them on, but also doing that still, like I wasn't still doing daycare. I don't know, like it brought up a lot of shame. If the stuff that you still have is no longer you, not only is it keeping you in the past, but it can really make you feel very guilty. So now is the time to let go. Embrace who you are today and make room for who you're going to be tomorrow. Can we talk about gifts for a second? It was just Christmas. You probably got some things you don't actually like. My mom likes to buy me a lot of scarves. This is so itchy. It's beautiful, but it's so big and I always feel like I'm suffocating. She also got me this like neck wrapper thing. I have no neck friends, but it's hard to let them go because I feel guilty. But more than that, every time I look at them, I feel guilty for not using it. I feel guilty for not liking it. I feel guilty that she wasted money on this stuff. And this is a cycle that I have been perpetuating for years. It's time to let it go. As soon as these are gone, I'll never think about them again. And it's not like my mom's going to know that I decluttered them. So think about all those gifts. You are doing yourself and the person who gave it to you a disservice by holding on to gifts that you don't love. I've decluttered hundreds of homes that are filled with baby items, even though there are no babies in the house and no babies coming in the house. And what I hear from parents is that looking at that stuff makes them feel actually guilty. Guilty because they're not passing it on, guilty that maybe they didn't have another child even though they wanted one. We think that baby items are like nice memories, but the opposite is usually true. So if you have no intentions of having more children, why not pass on? On all that baby stuff to a new mom that you know. Another thing that makes us feel really guilty are those family heirlooms. So things that have been passed down to us, but we don't actually like them. You're not honoring your grandmother by keeping her rocking chair dusty in your basement. And not only that, every time we look at it, we're feeling so much guilt and shame for not using and actually liking it. What if we passed it on? What if we called other family members and said, take this and use it and love it or donate it to someone who's going to cherish it? That's how we can honor our family's memories. I am definitely a book lover. I love to buy them, but there's lots I have never read. And in all honesty, I'll never read them. Every time I look at them though, I feel kind of guilty for not enjoying them, not reading them, the money I spent on them, and they're not doing anyone any favors collecting dust on a bookshelf. So donate the books you know you're never gonna read. You're still a book lover, but share your love of reading with other people and stop feeling guilty for the books you just don't like. This one might just be me, but I have a ton of home decor, like so much. I really have to pull it all out. Old pillows and blankets and artwork that I've kept even though I've changed my style or it doesn't fit or I don't really even like it, but I feel bad letting it go because I spent money on it. But I feel even worse every time I see it just taking up space because it reminds me of the wasted money. So it's guilt. As soon as I let these go, I know I'll never think about them again and they'll stop making me feel all these negative things. Of course I made you guys a printable because I love the printable. So I'm gonna put it in the description below. Click on it, check off all or at least some of these things for a better 2024. I hope you're feeling pumped. Like I promise you letting these things go is gonna drastically improve your life. You don't have to run 5K or do some crazy life altering habits. You just have to let go of the things that are holding you back. So grab a box, grab a trash bag and let's declutter. You can declutter all these things today and the rest of your life will be better. So what the heck are you waiting for? Thank you so much. I hope you're feeling really motivated and I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. Quick story for you and then let's talk about gratitude for 2023. I, a couple of weeks ago, did my very first 
keynote speaking engagement. It was in Baltimore for an ADHD conference and I was one of the keynote speakers. I've never done this before. I'm not so great at public speaking. And also it was talking about my ADHD story, which I have never shared. I was so scared. I procrastinated to the last minute, but I did it. And I'm really proud of myself. I did cry on stage twice, which was embarrassing. Um, and everyone was so nice. They just kind of waited for me to stop sobbing like a baby. But then I got two standing ovations. Maybe it's because I cried. Maybe it's because I'm awesome. We'll never know. It's probably because I cried. But that was like such a highlight for me. So I'm looking back on 2023 and I want to focus on all the great stuff. There was some terrible stuff that happened, but let's focus on the good. In the comments below, please, I want to share in your joy. Let me know some of your top moments from 2023. I moved to a new house, which we love, which has been amazing. We got Penny, who's my absolute best friend, and I am addicted to her. We've just had so many wonderful things this year, but I want to know your wonderful things too. So let's practice some gratitude and let me know in the comments below, and I can't wait to read them. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you soon.